and you get that information and we're ready to start. So welcome everybody, just a week before, uh, I think for most of the year, uh, most of you, the year will come to an end or to at least a quieter phase. Um, uh, since we have this uh, revolving release circle of LAN OS with the three, mo three months, every three months there's a new version. So the, the last version in the year is just uh, before the holidays, but the reason for that is that we have the new version in place for everybody who starts a new sprint in January next year. Uh, and you have one or two weeks to uh, get the information what's new in the guide. Um, I just switch to the to the agenda, what we try to do now, what I try to do uh, now, I will just uh, talk a little bit about what happened since the first release in September, 17th of September, uh, what were the major events. Uh, and then of course, the main part of this uh, open webcast today will be the news for version 1.1. It's a relatively big step. Uh, as I said in the last webinar, the goal for the first version was to be uh, at least feature complete with other methods like uh, getting things done or working out loud and so on. Uh, and now we begin to do some, some changes and change a lot in the guide. Uh, so the 1.0 version is sort of a baseline and from now on we have a con continuous improvement cycle uh, every three months. And I will talk about how to give feedback and suggest improvements and so on. Uh, we'll talk about the five major changes uh, for version 1.1. Uh, I have one slide with the next steps. So what's planned to do next year, we are also about to uh, work on a two year uh, roadmap. So what will happen in the next two years, we plan to release this with uh, the version one to uh, 1.0, uh, no 1.2 uh, in March next year, I will show this. And I hope that we will have at least half of the session, like half an hour uh, uh, for an open discussion, for questions, for improvements and so on, just have an open chat. But as I said, if you want to, you can open your mic uh, during uh, my talk or my presentation and just uh, go straight ahead and talk. Uh, for those of you who are new to LanOS, uh, just as sort of a uh, repetition, LanOS is an operating system for lifelong learning and learning organizations. There will be a lot of different guides out there. Uh, for different topics, for the level of the individual, the level of teams, the level of the organization. Uh, the first that was released was this LanOS guide you see on the right side, which is sort of a, a combination of methods like personal knowledge management, objective key results, getting things done, working out loud, and Scrum. Uh, it's for the individual because we think that the, the work style of the individual is sort of the core uh, for developing an organization, a learning organization, to have the right mindset in place, that's very important. But uh, we released a few weeks ago uh, just uh, the next guide, um, which is, was an expert debriefing guide for uh, retaining knowledge when people are leaving a position. And of course, this should be interlinked with the way how uh, individuals work. But this is not uh, the, the topic of uh, this open session. If you want to go to lenos.org, there will be uh, much more information about all the guides that are available in the future just so you have to the link. So what happened uh, since the last release, we had uh, more than 1,700 downloads of the guide uh, with a majority coming from uh, Germany or the German speaking countries, more than 1,200 and about 516 uh, from English speaking countries or from all over the world. It's every, everything else summed up. Uh, what we count is just the download of the English or the German version of the material. Uh, there are three open uh, circles running and three piloting organizations who try this out internally. I think there will be some case studies released in the next year. Um, with the one open cycle that I did together with Leonid and Till Moritz, uh, we just released as part, we recorded as part of our final uh, uh, weekly. So to say, we recorded a lessons learned podcast. It's published. Um, something like an hour podcast where we talk about all the experiences from from the circle and especially uh, about all these different things like um, this objective key result method about the use of uh, OneNote and Teams. Uh, I have to say sorry that podcast is in German so if you're only English speaking uh, there's no translation so far uh, but if you're if you're a German uh, if you understand German at least you can go to the URL on the slide and you will find 
uh, the podcast there. There was a lot of discussion in the Telegram user group. Uh, I also got some emails and, and uh, personal conversations where people say that uh, they muted the Telegram group because when their discussion is coming up, uh, the smartphone is doing pings all the time. Uh, so um, we came to the conclusion that the Telegram group is not uh, a suitable solution for the future for the user group. I will. Uh, talk a little bit about the in the next steps uh, section how we want to deal with that. There will be another community platform for that. Then there was a lot of feedback, of course, in, in closed and open channels like virtual, but also in real life. There was the working out loud cam in, in Berlin. Uh, most of the feedback was positive. Some of the feedback was negative, mainly concerning about the uh, similarity with the working out loud guides. I think with um, the changes that we do now, we, we will see that we'll move uh, away from this original source, uh, bringing more elements in from getting things done, OKR and, and Scrum and so on. But I, I was really happy that there were lots of positive feedback uh, regarding the version one. As I said, there's another um, guide released for a method called expert debriefing uh, for knowledge retention with individuals when people leave their job. This is a document we had already in the past uh, here in the Cochrane Academy, uh, which was a, just released as a PDF version in trainings and also only on SlideShare. And we uh, translated that to the, the mechanisms like the, the markdown format that we use with the other Lano S guides. Uh, we will have a feedback loop now with all the, the moderators and we prepare to have an English language next year. I think until uh, uh, mid 2019, there will be an English version as well. So much for what happened until now. So a uh, few information about what's new in the version 1.1. One, one. Um, there are uh, little things that you can see on the cover, uh, as you can see here on the screenshot, uh, you see the version in the tagline on the bottom. And that uh, was just this change from 1.02. Uh, to 1.1, so not much change in the, uh, in the cover. Uh, but if you have a look at the uh, index, uh, at the contents, so to say, uh, there you can see that we do uh, some rearrangement. Um, there was just some renaming. The y S chapter was renamed to uh, introduction to make it more compatible with other guides. For example, we are preparing a, a guide for running bar camps at the moment, and there we will have as a high level structure always an introduction chapter and not a Y bar camp chapter. So, this is why we changed this. Uh, then we changed the name of the Learner S uh, Circles and Sprints. I will talk about that later on. And I think one of the major changes is that we changed the, uh, the position of the um, weekly agenda and the cutters, which have been in the uh, appendix in the version 1.0 and which have now move to the main content, to chapter eight, uh, and I will talk about that later on as well. So first about the renaming, we renamed Learner Circle and Learner Sprint to Learning Circle and uh, Learning Sprint. Uh, the reason is that it's easier in common language when you, when you talk with your colleague, what are you doing? It's relatively strange if you say I'm in the Learner Circle uh, because you have to explain what Learners is and so on. And uh, for that reason, we thought that um, renaming it to learning circle might be uh, positive because on the one hand, it's a very common used uh, term in agile learning. Um, like if you use things like Edu Scrum or um, uh, other agile learning methods, uh, learning circle is a default method and uh, a learning sprint is a default method. And uh, therefore, we thought it might be good to have it renamed and uh, make it easier for people to uh, talk about what they are doing when they're doing a sprint or when they are part of a circuit. So this is just um, a renaming. Then uh, in, the, in the cutter, in the exercise where you define your goal for the next 12 weeks, um, the objective key result methods, as you can see on the left, uh, was just a suggestion or as you see on, on the bottom, uh, a so-called pro tip uh, to use OKR. Uh, and with the experience from uh, all the pilot circles, we decided to make this a, um, a the default, uh, where we talked about also using the smart criteria for goal definition or the fast criteria. Uh, remo we removed it from the, from the cutter uh, and made uh, the objective key result method and also the format 
as you can see on the right, how to formulate an objective key result as the default method. So when you formulate the uh, your objective for a sprint, for example, you uh, we want you to, you should uh, use this format like I will. Uh, this is your objective. This should be very attractive objective, which is not measure measurable. Uh, it's not like a smart goal. It's more like a vision, something that you really, really want, uh, so to say. Uh, and then uh, according to the Google OKR approach, you have this as measured by. Uh, these are the key results, uh, three to five key results per objective, where you can measure on a scale from one, uh, from zero to one, uh, if you reach that objective. And we also suggest, like Google is doing it, that uh, you should see uh, 0.7 or 70% as a success. Uh, Google is doing that uh, that way. Uh, because they want the, em the employees to define stretch goals. Uh, and if you define a goal in, in a way that you, uh, you're you sure that you reach it, then it's not an ambitious goal. So that's the reason why Google suggests to have a 0 0.7 as a success. And we just uh, used that as well here in the LANOS guide. So this is one change. Uh, another change is, uh, as I uh, said in another uh, lost cast um, in the past, uh, I have been part of uh, 12 working out loud circles. And in all these circles, uh, I had the impressions that there are, if you only have this one hour per week, there are too many exercises per week. Uh, so I had the idea to reduce the amount of uh, exercises um, uh, to make it easier for people to uh, do all the exercises to comply, uh, comply with the guide, uh, but without losing the core idea of working out loud, because I think the core idea is really cool. Uh, and when you when you don't do an exercise, perhaps you miss a very central part. So my idea was to reduce it a little in the working out loud guides like they are now, 4.51. Um, there are, I think, 31 exercises and my idea was to reduce it to something like 10. So what I did is I had a, from this 12 circles, I did sort of a gut feeling uh, which, um, which exercises were very valuable for me, but also which ex exercises I never did. Uh, and I had the idea to uh, like validate this gut feeling with a survey. Uh, I did a survey this year with about uh, 130 people responding. I, We'll have a slide in a second. And uh, this is what you see on the left. It's not published yet, the result. I wasn't able to, to finish the documentation for the survey. But as you can see, the different colors are the different exercises, the 31. And you can see from these 130 people, there are, for example, uh, in the middle over here, this brown one, uh, it's your, the vision exercise, for example, or uh, the orange one is the goal for the next 12 weeks, or this brown one, I think it's this, um, the exercise people related to my goal. Uh, these are exercises that are seem to be very valuable uh, for the people in circles. And there are others like this uh, pink one over here or this pink one over here that people uh, seem not to do or seem not to uh, see as valuable as others. So this was the approach to de uh, detect the exercises uh, by wall survey. Uh, and without losing, as I said, the core idea and of course, everybody has perhaps a little other perspective uh, on what the core idea of working out loud is. Uh, I tried to put this in a, in a slide. Uh, for me, if you're a practitioner like the guy on the left side, uh, it's the situation that you have a, a goal that comes from a vision, from a uh, kind of an image, like you imagine yourself in the future, what you want to do, where you want to work, what you want to learn. Uh, like a goal is emerging from that. There are other pr uh, practitioners who uh, do certain activities. Uh, they have to do something and they see that they have to gain new knowledge. They have to learn something and the goals uh, emerge from that. Uh, so in any case, you have some goals, which in wall is the wall goal uh, that you use in a, in a circle, for example. And uh, the hypothesis is that there are people out there uh, that you don't know uh, in brackets yet, because the idea is that you don't want to have to reinvent the wheel or do the same mistakes again and again. So the, uh, the question is, how do I get in relation with these people? So this is a very central part here uh, to build relationships with people I don't know yet. 
and uh, because it's not a good idea to just ask them to help you when they don't know yet uh, for me that's core of all to uh, have this generous contributions like you share a lot uh, you help people you share attention you say thank you and so on to build that relationship so in the future if you need some help uh, these people that you by by that time will know uh, will help you and support you so this was for me very important when when i had a a look at the exercises, what to leave out, uh, that this basic idea uh, is still present in the in the Lenoir's cutter set, even in the reduced set. Uh, this just as a, as an information uh, about this wall survey. This ran from July to September 2018. There were 131 participants. I deleted two because criteria for me was that uh, everybody uh, did at least one circle, because when you're in the middle, middle of a circle, you can't uh, uh, you can say if there's an exercise is valuable or not. Uh, and then I had the hypothesis that uh, when you do a working out loud circle out of intrinsic motivation, uh, you like the, the exercises more that have more value for you. So this question seven, as you can see in bold, uh, is which exercises in the circle guide do you like most? Uh, and this is where the graphic that you see in the slide before on the uh, on the left hand side, where the the top five uh, exercises came from. And then I just enriched that uh, by the ones that are needed to uh, still have this core idea of all presented. So the next thing that changes is, um, as you can see on the left-hand side, the, the agenda for the individual uh, exercises and, and the exercises itself have been in the appendix and have been separated. Uh, the idea in, for the version 1.0 was to have it in a more flexible and modular way, but we got the feedback uh, that it's relatively difficult to keep an overview, that the core of, of the flow, so to say, is part of the appendix and that the exercises are not where the, the weekly agenda is. So the idea was to reintegrate that uh, with version 1.1. And uh, what you can see here, this red and green indication is the cutters, uh, the exercises that are still part uh, of, the, of the guide and the red ones are the ones who, who are out of the guide right now. Uh, so 11 have been uh, left over and we were thinking about and uh, and a name sort of for this learning path. I will talk about learning path in, in a second because this is another change in the guide. But the question was, uh, if you remember, I had uh, in the past this idea of wall plus, like uh, what are you doing after the next, uh, after the first circle that you did perhaps? Perhaps you saw the, the post of Basti Holman and there was also a session on the wall camp. Normally you don't run the same circle style with the same exercises like 10 times uh, after each other. So uh, we were thinking about what could be a name for um, such an, an, a circle that you do for initiation for the first time, so to say. And uh, in, in the uh, digitization age, we came up with this noob, uh, short form noob. Uh, it's lead speak, uh, it's short for newbie. So this is sort of the, the learning path for newbies. If you've never heard of uh, Leon OS, or if you, same counts, I think, for Wall. Uh, if you've never heard of it, it's a good idea to have this guided program where you have exercises for each week, where it's exactly described what you do. Uh, later on, if you're, uh, if you're experienced, if you're a pro, uh, then you might change the path, you might change the exercises, you might leave something out, you might add something. Uh, and this is where also Lano is needs to get uh, much more flexible than this now. Uh, so this is where the name comes from. And as you can see here with the with the uh, arrows, uh, we put together everything that has been the weekly agenda agenda in the uh, in the index in the in the context, uh, put it in the circle moderated checklist. Uh, if you use the OneNote template for circles, you already know this because there's one circle moderator checklist uh, where everything is in for the whole uh, for the whole circle, for the whole sprint. And we got very positive fed feedback for this overview of every activity in the circle. So this went here. And then we had a little rearrangement of the exercises. This is because uh, this is why the, 
the errors look a little bit like spaghetti code. Um, but we have now this uh, 8.2 to 8.12. These are 11, uh, 11 exercises for 11 weeks. So we reduced, so to say, the amount of exercises from more than 30 to just 11 to make it easier uh, for everybody with just an hour a week uh, to at least do all the exercises in a proper way. And in terms of feedback, this would be very interesting for us uh, on the one hand side uh, for the next sprint or for the first sprint that you perhaps do in, in 2019. Uh, is any kata, any exercise that we uh, left out, is it missing, like that you like or need a lot, and we kicked it out? Uh, this would be very valuable feedback. And, and the other thing would be uh, if the, um, the new sequenciation, like the, the uh, order of the katas is in the right way, uh, or if there's something feeling strange somehow, and we should reorder it for a version 1.2, uh, 1 sorry. Uh, I talked a little bit about this learning path already. Um, perhaps you read on Twitter that uh, there are people like Karl Damke, for example, they are uh, thinking about creating a uh, Leno S version where you can learn sketch noting with it. Uh, the hashtag is sketch noting out loud. Also with Leonid, we talked about uh, having a, uh, a version where you can learn podcasting with it. We are thinking about uh, teaching people how to uh, run an own bar camp. Uh, so we took an idea that comes from the education of programmers. There's a book called uh, The Pragmatic Programmer by Hunt and Thomas. And they describe how programmers should or can be educated. And there are the two concepts of the dojos and the katas. This is where the kata uh, term comes from. Uh, kata is just a standardized exercise that you do with new programmers. And a dojo is sort of a a place where you come together to practice. Uh, dojos are used in martial arts, like karate or judo or so, uh, but also in meditation. When you do meditation practice, you have a dojo. It's just a, a place where all the practitioners practice. And uh, then the third thing that comes from this dojo ideas are learning paths. If you have a look on the website, Coda Dojo, for example, codadojo.com, uh, which has the goal to teach uh, children how to code. Uh, then you can see there, it's the image on the left, that you have these learning paths where you decide what you want to learn. Like I want to learn Android programming or HTML5 or Arduino or PHP. And if you click on such a learning path, you normally get a, uh, um, a learning path. It's differentiated by are you a beginner? Are you a advanced or are you professional? Then you have different cutters or different exercises. And when programmers meet, then they do this in pair programming or in uh, one, one experienced guy is showing um, the programming interface on the Beamer or on a, on a television set uh, and the others are learning how to do it. So this is why we, we decided to also, uh, after the concept of cutters, we also decided to uh, transfer the concept of learning paths to LanOS. What does this mean concretely for a sprint? If we have, uh, for example, look here on the sprint, this, uh, sprints in LanOS are always 13 weeks, not 12. This is just because if you divide the 52 weeks of a year by four, uh, you have uh, 13 weeks. So a year consists out of uh, four sprints, so to say. Uh, from the concept of Scrum, we have this sprint planning, this week zero where the circle meets and plans everything. Uh, there's no cutter in week zero. It's just planning, making sure that everybody's on the same page, understands the method, can use the tools, can use the video conference and platform if you're a virtual circle, for example. And week 12 is for a retro, a retrospective. You don't do any cutters there as well. And then you have this uh, week one to 11 with uh, assignments, like uh, you get uh, something to read, something to listen to, something to watch, and exercises. These are the 11 exercises that I showed in the slide before. And the basic idea here is that you make this, uh, this learning path thing interchangeable. So a vision for the future is that there might be a lot of different uh, learning paths, uh, like a sketch noting path, as I said, a podcasting path, a bar camp path, uh, a web logger path, a wiki path, whatever. Uh, so you can exchange the, the cutter sets and we will um, provide a template in the future as well. So everybody who wants to can publish their own uh, learning paths. 
And the basic idea is then that you just have this basic pattern of the learning sprint with the framing week zero and week 12, and you just interchange uh, the learning path, so to say, so you interchange the, the content of the circle, for, uh, as you could say. So this is the basic idea of this uh, learning path. And uh, as I said, the, the reason for that is to uh, make the sprints more flexible and modular. Uh, everybody who wants to uh, in the future can create own learning paths. Perhaps it's a little bit like if you know open source development, like the Linux platform, for example, you can take a Linux distribution. If you don't like the way how uh, the module for Wi-Fi connection is done, you just program your own. And this is just the, the basic idea here that you can uh, exchange parts of the whole method, so to say. Uh, of course, there's just a little uh, change, but uh, I want to mention it. We uh, put the, the content for the new guide in English and in German, as well in the OneNote template. For those of you who don't know that already, because you just had a look at the PDF, for example, uh, there's a OneNote uh, template that you can use to run a circle. Uh, in just one note, in the in the lessons learned podcast, uh, which I uh, mentioned in the introduction, uh, we used Microsoft Teams because there we have a group chat, a one note, and the video conferencing platform in one tool on mobile interface and on the desktop. But you can also use standalone one note. And there, as you can see, you have a uh, it's not in the screenshot a welcome section on the left where everything is explained how to work with the with the template and so on. Uh, you have one section for the circle members. Uh, if you want to, in the Q&A round, we can have a look in the template if you have questions regarding that. Uh, every circle member has its own area where, where it can document um, the results from the exercises. So I can look in the, let's say, uh, goal documentation or a relationship list of the other persons in the circle. And I can just put a command and say here, I know this guy, perhaps you talk to him because he's related to your goal, you don't know him yet. So everything that happens in the circle, uh, this way can happen uh, in the virtual circle or in the, uh, in the one note as well. Uh, then we uh, put together the individual weeks. In the last version, we had a week zero and week one to 12 separated. This is just one, um, one section called learning sprint now. And as you can see here on the right, you have the circuit moderator checklist on the top. So everybody is just uh, on the same page, seeing what's the agenda for the meetings. These checkboxes here are clickable in OneNote. So the moderator can, uh, uh, can check if you have done an exercise. Also, if you ex exchange exercises or add something, you can add it easily in OneNote and, and change the agenda for your sprint. And then uh, over here, you have the content of all the cutters. So if you want to, uh, put remarks there or change something in the catas, you can do it in one in one note as well. Um, the last section here is just with links. So here you have the most important links for Lano S for getting things done for objective key results, Scrum, and working out loud, of course. Uh, the same what I said counts for the mobile experience. So this is just the same template opened on the uh, mobile app uh, for OneNote. Also there you have on your smartphone or in your tablet. Uh, the same moderator checklist, also the same section for circle members. If you're on the, uh, if you're traveling and you have an idea whom to put on your relationship list, just put out your smartphone and, and add him or her to the list and all the others get a notification if they want to and they see uh, uh, your goal changed or your relationship change uh, is changed. Uh, for those of you who don't use OneNote or don't use it yet, uh, there's an export format. It's called one uh, one p p k g. <laughs> uh, long things like dot uh, dot x, for example, in Word is a template version. So when you download the uh, the archive for the version one one point one, uh, there is this one p k g file inside. If you double click on it, it's just opening in your OneNote, and every uh, all the content is there. You have to decide for a place where to store it and then invite the other circle members. So in uh, 10 seconds, you have a working environment for, uh, for your circle if you want to. Uh, just as a little goodie at the end, uh, in terms of uh, technical changes, um, I said it in one of the webcasts before, um, we have a single source production workflow. So everything we write, all the guides are written in Markdown. It's this little file icon on the left. 
Markdown is sort of a simplified version of HTML, so to say. Uh, and we write all the guides in, uh, the, in the English language version and translated with machine translation to be uh, fast changes. And uh, there was one issue with the old production workflow. Uh, the workflow runs with a tool called Pandoc. Everything, if you want to uh, dive deeper in it, is documented on, on the GitHub page for LanOS. Uh, this Pandoc tool is a, a so-called content translation tool. So from Markdown, we can uh, translate the content into 66 or something uh, target formats. What we do at the moment is we create um, a PDF version, uh, we create a Word version, and we create an ebook format. Uh, in the version 1.0, we created EPUB. And for the one of you who know a little bit about ebooks, uh, there are different formats for ebooks. Uh, e -books. The most popular are um, uh, EPUB and Mobi. And Mobi is used by Amazon, Amazon Kindle devices and apps. And in the last workflow, we had the problem that the, uh, this ebook format cannot easily be imported to Kindle. If you have a Kindle, you get an email address for your Kindle. If you send a document just to that email address, it pops up on your uh, ebook reader. And that's, that's the experience that we wanted to be. Uh, and the EPUB format didn't have a cover. So if you open the, uh, if you were able to manage to get the document on your device, uh, there was no cover inside. So we, uh, what we wanted to have is what you see on the right, uh, on the upper picture, you see um, the Lanois guide in the Kindle app on an iPad. You can also see, or at least uh, uh, get an idea that if you mark something in the Kindle version, you can uh, um, color it, like you can highlight it. Uh, you can also add notes if you, for example, when I'm a circle moderator, I often have notes in my in my guides to uh, uh, have ideas what stories to tell at a special cover, uh, a cutter, and so on. Uh, so it's what you can see in the middle. Also in an iPad version, and on the lower picture, you can see the same uh, ebook on the um, Kindle Paperwhite uh, hardware device. So if I put an, an uh, command. On my iPhone, for example, it syncs with the Kindle on on the uh, on the on the Kindle Paperwhite, and and then I have every content over there. I can also build a reading group with others, so we can share one guide and see the the notes with others and so on. So this is the vision that we want to have. So we changed the production workflow a little bit, used Image Magic to extract the cover as an image, uh, and then used the open source ebook platform Calibre. Uh, and just gave the uh, generated EPUB file to Calibre, and Calibre like generated uh, the EPUB format with the cover on top and also the MOBI format. And uh, then another thing we changed is that we don't release the individual files, but everything is just packed together to one zip file. If you go to lanos.org, you have an English and a German zip file, and you have all these formats that you see here. Uh, that you can just download. Uh, you can open the PDF there if you want to. Uh, and if you just send the MOBI file to your uh, Kindle email address, it pops up in your email app as well. So this is uh, just for the ones of you who want to uh, like uh, read the guide in the, in the Christmas holidays or uh, when going to skiing or on a business trip. Uh, it's what we try to make it as accessible as possible. Uh, just a few bullet points for the next steps. Uh, what we also did, since we have this Word version, we have a Google Doc feedback version. So we just imported the Word version in, as Google Doc. And we have a link that's also linked in the release notes on lanos.org. This is a Google Doc which is just commendable. So if you have ideas or change requests or feedbacks for uh, elements of the guide, you can just put it there as uh, feedback and with this roadmap that I mentioned, we will also re uh, release sort of a, uh, a development cycle where we define uh, for version 1.2, uh, for example, until when uh, we will be able to uh, have a look at the feedback uh, for the next version. Uh, then we will open up the community that we used so far in the Cognion Academy for customer projects and bench learnings. It's called Connect. It's a community platform based on discourse, and this will replace the uh, Telegram group in early 2019. We will uh, post the information uh, in the Telegram group, then everybody will be invited and will get an invite link as well. 
Uh, same counts for the feedback platform on lanos.feeder.io. This is sort of a platform similar to uh, Uservoices.com, but there has not been a lot of traffic. Most of the feedback arrived uh, in our email inbox or in personal conversations, and I think it's better to have uh, one community platform where everything uh, will be documented, where people can vote on ideas and so on, and not have it distributed over several systems. Uh, this will take place also in uh, early 2019. Uh, the version 1.0 release will be on the 18th of March. Uh, there's already this GoToMeeting URL. Uh, if you want to, you can just save the date. Um, and what we are working on, I said it already, is a roadmap for the next two years because there are a lot of people who want to contribute, who want to create own, uh, own learning paths and so on, who want to have sort of safety. Uh, when will there be new releases? When should I give feedback and so on? So the idea is to uh, have this roadmap, uh, I think also early 2019. My goal is to have it until uh, January 2019. So we have a clear uh, pathway to the future here. Uh, there are also ideas about a learner's camp, a bar camp where practitioners can meet. Uh, last year on the corporate learning camp, there was this idea of having perhaps a virtual bar camp. Uh, with a uh, virtual reality technology. We're still thinking about that. So if someone wants to support that, wants to run a virtual bar camp or says, oh, I want to have it as physical bar camp, just get in touch. Uh, there's nothing fixed yet. So we're still in the planning phase. So that's from my side regarding the new release. And uh, now I think we have about uh, 25, 22 minutes for